Hey guys, how you doing? Ron's a nut here. Another video for you guys uh, for my clan DXD Indicate Soldier. Uh, shout out to all of my uh, clan mates out there. I just thought I'd make another video on a couple of builds that I really like. Probably, probably one of my favorite, most favorite all-around builds. And it's a uh, hybrid uh, skill damage build. I've got two of them to show you. One takes a little more time to uh, put together, um, uh, but the other one I think is actually more fun. And if you like to shoot more than let your skills do the work, then the other one's for you. So uh, let me show you uh, what they are. Uh, the first one is a uh, build with uh, Negotiator's Dilemma. Now, both of these builds, I will be using the uh, Technician Specialization. And um, let's go take a look and see what the technician specialization uh, offers you. So I'm using the technician class, and the main reason to, I use it for this, and number one is having the technician gives you one extra skill tier. So you're definitely going to want that. Uh, you don't have to. You can uh, roll all of your cores to yellow, and uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. But... Um, that's the first reason. And then, obviously, um, for damaging drones, skill proxies, and robotics, you get um, dismantling. So this is uh, good for that 12%. Um, armor kits apply to friends within 10 meters. And then the Artificer Hive is really good. I don't use it in these two builds you're going to see, but they're still uh, it's still very good. And you can always put it on if you need to. You get in a situation and you want to buff your... Um, your skill big time and or your uh, teammates but I have other builds for that that are skill buff builds um, that I'll show you some other time other than that um, the main uh, weapon I've selected for the increased assault rifle damage is this one here because I'm using the capacitor and we'll again I'll go into that a little bit more I do happen to have a harmony rifle uh, as a secondary weapon but I really don't use it, and, but you can make you can pick whatever other ones you want to use here, uh, depending on your choice. But primarily, you're going to want to use the capacitor. And then, of course, you have an option. Uh, this is going to be a skill damage weapon damage build, so I've selected the skill damage. You could opt for healing if you wanted to um, modify this uh, for some healing. So for the first build. I am using the, um, it's a four piece of Negotiator's Dilemma, a Cheska chest piece, and the Memento uh, backpack. And I go through each of them now. Uh, again, I use the Harmony because I am using skills. So if I do need to get a longer range shot or for some reason I run out of ammo I will use the Harmony you can use whatever you want here um, but it comes with perfectly in sync so hitting an enemy grants 20% skill damage for five seconds using the skill of damaging an enemy with the skill grants 20% weapon damage so this is good for giving you both a buff to your weapon and skill damage and since I am using a turret and a striker drone I am damaging uh, all the time um, now, using the capacitor, um, this one here is hitting for 111.1K. It is maxed out. I have all of these pieces. These are the only attributes that come with the gun, of course. But the key here is when shooting your enemy, build stacks up to a cap of 40. So you want to get at least, you know, if you get 40 bullets in them, which is easy to do. Um, and each stack grants one and a half uh, skill damage. And then after uh, five seconds, the stacks decay one per second. Now, a really good thing for your weapon damage is for every yellow skill tier, core tier you have, you get 7.5% uh, weapon damage. Now, I have 6 skill tier, and so 6 times 7.5, that's 45% additional weapon damage you get from having all these. So even though it's a full yellow core build, this weapon will get you some serious uh, damage, uh, weapon damage. So a capacitor is definitely, and also it has really good range. I, I, I think this thing beams pretty accurately. So it's, you know, it's up there three quarters range and the drop off is not too bad, but uh, it is uh, really powerful, especially in this build. 
Now I'll take you through the um, negotiator's dilemma bits now. Um, I go with the mask and the negotiator's dilemma when you use this, one of the things that's nice about this is that having two pieces, one piece, two pieces gives you a 15% critical hit chance, which you'll need, and then 20% critical hit damage uh, when you get three pieces. And you go to four pieces, critical hits, mark the enemies for 20 seconds, <clears throat> and you, with just four pieces, you'll get, you can mark up to three enemies. Now, when you critically hit a marked enemy, the other marked enemies take 60% of the damage that's dealt. And then whenever a marked enemy dies, you get an additional 2% crit hit damage, stacking up to 20 times. So that's another 40% crit hit damage um, uh, if you get the max stacks there. Now, on all of my pieces, except for one, you want to get as much critical hit damages and you want to get as close or two to 60% crit hit chance mark as you can. So for me, most all of the pieces except for one, I rolled crit hit damage on. Now, the key to this is, of course, these these uh, negotiators dilemma they drop with a um, they drop like this with a a, a red core so you're going to have to farm for these pieces with crit hit damage or crit hit chance and again for the build that i'm showing you pretty much i think all you really need is one crit hit chance if you're using the capacitor um then really all you need is one and and uh, again i'll take you through that so so you know, you're going to have four pieces, so you can mark up to three hostiles, and you find them all with crit hit damage, and then I rolled uh, an extra max crit hit damage mod onto that. For the uh, holster, same thing. Oh, this one, I happen to have a really good drop of a crit hit chance. So this is where I get almost my 60% uh, because I have one nice piece of crit hit chance, and then, of course, I rolled the skill tier. For the knees, I have 10.4 uh, crit hit damage, so I can optimize this or hopefully get a better one to get even more crit hit damage. And again, I rolled skill tier. The gloves, same story, crit hit damage, so I got definitely more crit hit damage I can get out of this. But again, the key was to find one with that and then roll skill tier on it. Now, the um, I guess the chest piece is is key because I uh, you know you lack crit hit chance, although thankfully. Uh, assault rifles or SMGs, even if you wanted to use an SMG, they come with a lot of crit chance, but the assault rifles don't, and you don't have a choice with a capacitor, so you want to get as much crit hit uh, chance uh, to be able to, um, you know, get close to the to the cap. So in this case, um, I got crit hit damage on all of these, and then the one that has crit hit chance, I get the balance of my crit hit chance from having the, the Seska. So having one piece gives you 10% crit hit chance. So that gives me, and then I happen to be able to get one that I, I was able to max out. So I got 16% here and I got almost 6% there. So that's what, 22%. And um, then on my watch, I have crit hit chance. Uh, where are the reds? Offensive right here. Weapon damage, headshot damage, critted chance right there. So I've got 10% more there. And so using the Memento backpack is where I get, this is really, I think, pretty OP. And this is what helps make these builds um, really strong is um, the talent kill confirm now it comes with i almost have maxed out weapon damage i need to top off the armor and of course it comes with skill tier so you get one of each of these which is awesome and then i added a 12 percent crit hit damage mod but the talent kill confirm there's a temporary buff that you get when you uh after you kill somebody you run through the trophy you pick it up you get five percent weapon damage ten percent bonus armor and five percent skill efficiency so and they those you know as you run through but they, they only last 10 seconds but the real benefits come um, when you max them out. Once you get 30 stacks, so you kill and collect 30 um, trophies, you'll get 1% weapon damage. So that's 30% additional weapon damage. You get 1% uh, skill efficiency. That's an additional 30% skill efficiency. And skill efficiency, remember, is all of the skill attributes. You get 
uh, skill health, skill damage, skill repair, skill duration, and skill haste. I think that's all of them, right? So when you collect all these, you get all of that, right? And look, we're already, and we're at a skill tier six, so it makes it super strong. Then you also get 0.01% armor regen, and that 300 seconds, basically, that's five minutes. And you can take down rooms, and I mean, it, and then you keep killing, so you keep that buff going pretty much whole, almost, you know, whole missions as long as you're killing. So this is key. So the memento backpack is key for sustaining this. So um, let's take a look at the stats then. Oh, and then the skills I'm using are the uh, assault turret. And this assault turret, because I have, is skill tier 6, so 100%, 120% damage, 420% health. And then the mods I have on there are damage, health, and skill haste. Um, but you know, you, you don't you don't have to have those things. Once you max out your um, stacks on your memento, you're going to be in good shape. And then the other one, the other I like to use this the drone. Now again and again, this one happens to have max duration, health, and damage. Now since you're at a six skill tier, you don't have to use just these two. I just I prefer to use these two, but you could use any skill because you're at a skill tier six. So this is really, really flexible. So you can use whatever you're comfortable with and have a hell of a time um, taking down your enemies. Now, using these two, I mean, you can, I can go hide behind cover, find a good spot, and these guys can do all the work for me. And, uh, and it's great. But um, let's take a look now, though, at all of the, um, the stats. So let's go to the capacitor. So 111 weapon damage. I have 56.8 crit hit chance. I think that crit hit chance mod on that one piece I can get up to what 57. So um, so if you have just one gear piece with max crit hit chance, the way I have everything else laid out, you will have 57% crit hit chance. So you're almost at 60. Um, but I have 175% crit hit damage, and that's without having my memento stacked up. I'll show you, I'm going to run through a mission, and I'll collect those, and we'll see uh, how that changes. There's some headshot damage, armor. Um, my armor is a 902, so that's just the base armor because of, you know, it's a 726 plus the one, one almost 170 from my memento. Uh, and uh, so that's... Uh, that's it for how to spec this out. And again, all you got to do is farm for the skill tiers and then, uh, you know, find a, um, a Seska. Now, you don't have to use a Seska. You can use a, uh, you know, a uh, um, Fenris since you have an assault rifle. But the problem there is you don't, you, you're losing out on your crit hit chance. So, you know, I recommend this. But if you don't have it yet and you're still farming for it, you can use a Fenris as you'll gain some 10% assault rifle damage. Um, so that's an option, or or you can even use the sacrifice if you don't if you don't have a uh, Seska with a uh, glass cannon on it yet. Um, so that's it. So now I'm going to go out. I'm going to show you bits of a mission, and then we'll see the difference um, in the stacks. Oh, this is the Harmony. So the Harmony rifle. Um, I was able to put um, um, that maxed out because, but it has less crit hit damage. The Harmony has um, more spots for adding mods. That's, you know, so I got 15% crit hit chance on the Harmony. That's what got me up to 60. Um, but again, on the uh, capacitor, it comes with 10% on the gun itself, and then it comes with 30% on the muzzle. So that's why um, my stats on the uh, capacitor uh, are higher. Right next to the Grand Washington Hotel. Okay, here we go.
And one of the best ways to use this is you mark these little unlinked and then you you mark a, a guy that's hard to take down and these guys just melt. All you got to do is focus fire on the, uh, the big heavy like that. Uh, you can also extend your... Uh, okay, I got two guys marked. It's got great range and it's pretty damn accurate. You went all the way to the top floor. Take the stairs to the right of the elevators and work your way up.
Now, if you can see, I have all my stacks built up. And uh, let's take a look at my uh, weapon damage. Now, remember, it was 111 before, so I got uh, 20,000 more weapon damage. It does not, it's not reflecting any additional uh, critical hit damage uh, on here. So I think you just get that. It, it won't show it here, but you uh, will see if um, it goes up anymore. So you can already see my weapon damage has gone up. I just found an ammo stockpile. I'm going to detonate it. Now, I map my, uh, I have a button on my mouse, two buttons on my mouse. I map one to the uh, drone and one to the turret. And and what I'll do is I, like, I'll try it here. I'll focus uh, fire on wherever I need to with uh, those buttons. So I'm not even going to shoot here. I'm just going to put my turret here. And right now, I'm just going to focus on that guy. Both going to that, and then that guy. So, like when we do legendary, if I uh, if there's a lot of danger, I just uh, let my uh, drone and my turret go after them if I don't feel like shooting. And this is with the uh, negotiated dilemma version of this. Again, so having six skill tiers is is key for your skills. The the, uh, the next one I'm going to show you has got more skill damage. You doing all right there, Council? As long as I'm not breathing asbestos. That blasted a lot of damage. That guy, we'll let this guy get focused on. Shoot this guy. Yeah, that guy's gonna get I shot one time to get my drone to get in the action there, so. Rogue agent detected. Oh, -ho. all right, well, let's see how these things do with rogue agents. A little bit of a treat. I wonder if I can mark both of them take them down to be careful though because they have all their special shit let's see let's get some ammo here let's see how this goes here Have a lot of armor. Rogue airburst seeker mine detected. You get another line out of my. My drone is taking down the one down below. See that? I'm going to focus fire. Uh, I can get both of them on that one guy. Go. Rogue encounter with a hybrid skill. Yeah, that's the, the, of course, the downside is don't have a lot of armor, but you do get a lot of armor regen with the memento. And so that definitely helps quite a bit. I don't need any of this stuff. I don't know what he looks like, but 
Glad you made it. Ready when you are. Let's do this. Let's do this. Alright, so this should be good. The boss fight here. I like to find a little spot. And I like to position my uh, my turret up on something higher. But I can't find the spot. Let's see. There we go. Alright. And let's launch and let's start taking out. Mark some guy. I mean, I, you can shoot and kill wep weapon-wise, even with the glass cannon. And of course, if I forgot to mention glass cannon, of course, gives you uh, both kill and weapon damage. So it is. All right, I'm gonna focus fire on the uh, on the boss over there. He's already marked. So I'm gonna mark some of these guys, and then shoot at the boss, and those guys will all die. Thing is cool if you mark uh, you mark these enemies and then shoot the their their robotics or their uh, turret or whatever that uh, as long as it's marked it'll take them down that was a piece of cake
Kelso has some news for you. We got Ellen. So this is the other build. This is the other hybrid. This one is geared more towards skill damage a hybrid. You still get tremendous amount of uh, weapon damage with all the buffs from the Memento uh, again in this. But in this one, um, I have high-end pieces that I use and one improvised piece. So I use a Wyvernware, and Wyvernware covers with a, a core of yellow. So all you got to do is find it with crit chance or skill damage and roll or maximize the other one. Then I put 12% crit hit damage on there. My um, chest piece is, again, glass cannon, but this piece I was able to find uh, Fenris that had skill damage and crit hit chance on it. Um, but I didn't have glass cannon, so I had to roll that on here. Had I found one with skill damage, crit a chance, then I could have rolled the core to uh, skill, and then I would have had my fifth skill tier. The improvised holster, I was lucky on uh, this one actually came rolled with skill tier and skill damage. All I had to do was add crit hit chance, so that gave me my two there, and I have uh, I added the crit hit damage for my um, for my mod slot. Uh, Grupo. Grupo, this one I was lucky, had happened to come rolled with crit chance and skill damage, uh, so I re-rolled the core to skill tier so that I could get uh, uh, skill on there, and it comes with uh, base with crit hit damage for having one piece. And then my Seska gloves, um, this one, again, it came with crit hit chance, so I, but it didn't have the right roll here, so I had to roll skill damage on it, so that means I could not roll the core. So ideally, you'll find, you know, your Seska and Grupo and or Fenris with um, critted chance and skill damage. So that those are harder to farm for. But if you do that, and this, of course, the chess piece, you got to have glass cannon as well. So that's going to be an even tougher um, pull to get. But these two can happen. And I do have on other builds um, ones that have all of those rolls. So, but they still will hit really hard, even with five um, skill tier. And again, you can use another weapon that has Future Perfect and kill somebody with it, and then you'll have a six skill tier if you want. But again, the key to this is they all come with skill damage and crit hit chance, so you got a little more damage there. So uh, let's go out and see how this one uh, fares. Let's look at the stats real quick. So on the um, capacitor, weapon damage here is... Uh, 100k because it has more red cores, right? Uh, my other one uh, was uh, the negotiator's base was only 87k, so roughly 10, 12k weapon damage less. This one has a little bit more crit hit chance than the other one, or maybe right out about the same, but the crit hit damage is uh, less, 138 um, versus what 175. So. Having Negotiator's Dilemma buffs on there significantly increases your crit hit damage uh, uh, for your for your build. So let's go out and uh, see how this one fares. See if I feel any difference. Have you made it? Are you where you are? Let's do this.
got some news for you. We got Ellen. Is she okay? She's okay. I'm bringing her home. Oh, God. Oh, thank God. See you soon. So that's it guys. <clears throat> what did you think? I hope it was helpful. Um, uh, I, it's not, it was an exact true comparison because I didn't have full six skill tiers on here. But I think they both hit really hard. And I uh, I don't know. I, I think um, the Negotiator's Dilemma version of this is a little bit easier to put together because you don't have to worry about you know more than one attribute on on here. And it gives you all that critical hit chance and critical hit damage. So it's easy to get your, um, you know, to get everything stacked up uh, pretty high. So, uh, again, I don't know. You, you have to decide for yourself. Um, but I, I like them both. And, and, again, the fact that you got five or six skill tiers, um, depending on how you build it, you can use whatever skills you want and you're still going to remain strong. But the key is you got to get your stacks up on the memento. So that gets you, you know, your, your bonus armor and your regen and all that. Uh, and it helps, um, you know, deal with uh, glass cannon. Now, if you don't like glass cannon, you can um, go with um, uh, right here. You could go with a uh, obliterate talent. But I think the most damage because glass cannon gives you both uh all damage and it's amplified damage for both skill and weapon so that's the key why you really want whichever build uh, you decide to go with you want to have glass cannon on there um, and what else I think that's it oh the other thing was you could uh, go with I don't have one here. You could go with um, the So that's it guys, uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed the the builds um, you decide which you want to go with. This one's a little tougher to put together, but I believe it gives you more skill damage. Although, um, for both builds, uh, I, they're not exactly the same because I didn't have six. So this one had a little bit more weapon damage um, from the raw red cores. Um, but the Negotiator's Dilemma build uh, gives you, um, you know, that more, more crit uh, from having the you know, the, the, the uh, crit damage that's built into the Negotiator's Dilemma um, gear set. You get the crit chance and the crit damage you need. So I really like this. I, I enjoy let my skills do some work and me picking on those three, um, three marks to hit. 
and take down. So, um, but the other build will let your skills do more and do more damage. Um, you could go with, instead of these four pieces, if you wanted to, you could go for the fourth piece of the backpack, which will allow you to, um, when you, you'll do 100% damage. So the three guys that you mark will get you 100% damage. So whatever damage you do that one guy, the other two will take. So they'll go down faster. But I think because this is a hybrid, using the memento and getting all these stacks and giving you the additional weapon damage and all that skill efficiency and damage, I think it's way too strong. I think this is the best backpack to go for this. But you could, you know, go the other route. Um, but that would be more of a, you know, a, a gun, a weapon damage base rather than a hybrid approach. Bottom line is, um, you know, if you don't like glass canning, you could go with an obliterate. But because glass canning gives you uh, amplified damage to all damage, so that's both weapon and skill, that's really what you want. So um, either way you go, I uh, hope you enjoy. I hope you learned something. And um, I'll definitely be taking this build into a legendary. I haven't done that yet since I just built it uh, a couple of days ago. Um, but I want to try that. And I've used the other build, um, my other hybrid. This one I've used in legendaries all the time. I just put my guys down, pop out, get additional stacks to build up my uh, damage, and I go. But um, we'll see. So that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll uh, see you on the battlefield.